welcome to god's word fellowship i'm gerald santiago and we are studying about finding the will of god let's pray father we come to you in the name of our lord jesus father we thank you so much for your glorious love for us father we thank you you created us and made us for a purpose and father we pray you fill us with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we may walk worthy of you fully pleasing you being fruitful in every good work increasing in your knowledge strengthened with all might according to your glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy and father we pray you teach us your word father we pray you grant us wisdom knowledge understanding and revelation in your word your will and your love father we pray you grant us word in due season father we thank you for answers and solutions and father we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child jesus father we thank you so much for your marvelous healings and father we pray that you help us in our uh, country father you are full of mercy rich in mercy abundant in mercy and great in mercy father we pray you stretch out your hand and bring about a marvelous deliverance from the corona virus father by the authority of your word in the name of jesus corona virus die and be destroyed in the name of jesus we bind the works of the devil behind the corona virus in the name of jesus let every scheme every plan every device every weapon behind the corona virus be broken and destroyed father we thank you for your marvelous deliverance and father we pray hallelujah to jesus glory be to god blessed be your holy name father we pray for your mighty protection upon the elections that are happening in the states and the word counting the word counting machines and um, and the counting of the results and the publishing of results father everything be done in a honest and uh, honorable and uh, a just way father we pray there be no form of she- cheating fraud and deception father we pray that you prevent every form of cheating from fraud and deception and father we pray that you grant us leaders according to your heart and your will father we thank you for your mighty help for us father by the authority of your word in the name of jesus we bind every work of the devil concerning these elections in the name of our lord jesus let every scheme every plan every device every weapon of the devil concerning these elections be broken and destroyed father we thank you for your mighty help father you are good you are great and you are greatly to be praised father you are the most high and father you still rule in the kingdoms of men father we thank you for lead us according to your heart and your will father we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah to jesus let's go to our text today let's go to colossians chapter 1 let's read from verse um, 9 i encourage you to continue to pray for the elections and also stand in the gap for our nation concerning the corona virus we christians have a covenant with almighty god we are the ones with the blood covenant we have a covenant with almighty god based on the blood of jesus and we should stand in the gap for our nation it is our uh, privilege and it is our responsibility so um, you know the government can deal with it in the natural but they cannot do anything about the spiritual part of it do you understand that right and it is the spiritual part which drives these things so no matter what kind of measure you take in the natural uh, it, it can only handle the symptom it cannot handle the root cause the root cause is spiritual only a born again child of god a christian has the right and the ability to deal with the spiritual the root problem that's what we are doing when we are asking god for mercy and we are asking for deliverance and we are binding the works of the devil that is important and we ought to be doing that diligently and consistently do you understand that yeah so be uh, please be diligent and faithful in in interceding for our nation uh, th- this is an important time in 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 all our lives and uh, we, we should be responsible and we should be um you know diligent about these things hallelujah to jesus let's go to colossians 1 and let's read from verse 9 for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled say filled filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding 
that you might walk worthy of the lord notice all these things are connected your walk won't be aligned with god's will if you don't know what god's will is now many times people are trying to align their walk without finding out what god wants them to do see the vision will provide the direction when you when your vision is clear when i say vision i'm talking about uh, uh, what the call of god upon your life right uh, when, when that's clear then you can order your steps according to the vision when there is no clarity then then you are uh, you are ripe for you know being uh, moved here and there you know you you will you will do anything you feel like or whatever is profitable or whatever the society thinks is good or you are you will you'll be a easy candidate for uh, peer pressure and family pressure and um, relatives pressure society pressure right you you will fall for it easily see but when you have a clarity in what god has called you to do when you are clear about what god has put on the inside of you then you can order your steps according to it you can find great clarity in the life of jesus in the life of john the baptist in the life of paul clarity utter clarity about what they wanted to do and no amount of pressure and persecution should could persuade them from doing otherwise Do you understand that? You remember at one point of time, you know, because Jesus was doing mighty miracles, the people wanted to make him a king. Right? Go with me to John. John chapter 6. And, um, you know, Jesus did this awesome miracle. And uh, he multiplied the food and he fed thousands of people. And uh, after that, let's look at verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 14 and 15. John chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Then those men... When they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. See, there was pressure on Jesus to accept that invitation to become a king. They, they wanted him to be king. You know, somebody who can do miracles like this, <laughs> right? Who wouldn't want him to be a king? So these guys were planning, you know, to force Jesus to become the king. All right? And Jesus departed to spend time alone with the Father. Right? Other, other, other Gospels talks about him going to the mountain by himself to pray. Right? So Jesus was very clear on what God had called him to do. Now, if you read the uh, Old Testament verses about the, about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the verses that point to his first coming and the verses that point to his second coming, they, go, they, they are uh, mingled in different passages. Right? They are mixed all around the place. You know, it doesn't say in the first coming he will do this. In the second coming he will do this. There's, there's no uh, distinction like that, you know. God didn't put a, a title and then give points. First coming, this is what he is going to do. This is how he will be. <laughs> right? he, he didn't give that kind of a, you know, description. He didn't say second coming. Right? This is what will happen in the second coming. This is how he will work in the second coming. Now, he didn't mention anything like that. He just bundled every, everything together, mixed it up and gave it to the prophets. Right? Only those who are diligent about seeking God and who are serious about um, you know, uh, the word of God and the plan of God can actually divide it accurately and identify, okay, this is the first coming. This is the second coming. Jesus, when he came uh, the first time around to, to the earth as a man, he came as the Lamb of God. He came as the Redeemer. And he functioned as a prophet before he went to the cross. Right? He didn't come as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That, that is the second coming. Right? So, Jesus was aware of that. Jesus was very clear about that. You remember Matthew? Go with me to Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, you know how Jesus uh, appreciated Peter 
concerning the revelation he had received from God the Father about who he is. And uh, let's read from that verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, if you keep moving down, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Notice how he had a complete knowledge of what he was supposed to do. See, this is what the Bible means when it says filled with the knowledge of God and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Jesus didn't just have a small perception about what he is supposed to do. No, no. He has been seeking God from the time he was a boy. See, when he was 12 years old, he knows that he was supposed to serve God, right, in ministry. As a 12-year-old child. Can you, <laughs> can you see this? Let's read that. It will help you. It will bless you. I know these passages are familiar passages, but let's look at them and read them. Right? You know, God's word is full of revelation and it will give you fresh stuff every time. Right? Every, every time you read it, it will, it will come up with fresh strength, fresh revelation. Right? Uh, go with me to Luke chapter 2. And um, you remember, Jesus was uh, uh, missing. Right? Um, um, Mary and uh, Joseph went ahead to, you know, went back to their, um, I mean, they started going back to Nazareth without Jesus. They thought he is with their relatives. You know, they all travel as a company. And uh, so, uh, after a day or so, they found out that he's not there. So, they searched him for three days and then finally found him in the temple. So, when they came looking for Jesus, this is what Jesus had to say. Um, okay. Look at verse... Um, 46 and it came to pass after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers notice even as a 12 year bo old boy he understood the scriptures right he was a diligent student of the scriptures you know at 12 years of age if you are going to impress these doctors of the law right then you should have been really good. These are not guys who get impressed easily, right? These are what you call pundits, right? <laughs> Big boys of the law, right? They know law. They could probably quote the law back to you, right? These guys are good. And Jesus impressed these people. In fact, he astonished them, right? <laughs> not, not just his ability to quote. He understood what the scriptures said. Right, And when they asked him something, he could answer them, not out of just memory, but with understanding, with wisdom. That's what astonished them. Right? You know, many, many children, by the time they reach that bar mitzvah age, you know, they, they could quote uh, the first five books of uh, uh, Deuteronomy, the law, right? Uh, from Genesis to Deuteronomy. But these, but, you know, so that's not what the quoting or the memory power is not what impressed these people his understanding about the word you know if you notice when jesus during his ministry as he was you know answering the pharisees the sadducees and the different people who asked him questions his answers were very different unique now he would pull out a seemingly innocuous passage in the bible and he would bring out a great truth from that <laughs> so his understanding was was at another level Right? So they were amazed at that. And notice, Jesus' life was ordered towards what he was called to do. Jesus knows that he is supposed to do the Father's business. So he dedicated himself to seek the word of God. Do you see this? You remember you know, last week we read um, a passage in Ezra. Right? Hold your hand here and go back to Ezra. Ezra and in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 now like I have mentioned before this passage is very close to my heart 
is one of those passages that God used to inspire me to 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 you know into ministry right this is like a prodding stick for me you know God used it every now and then to poke me hey you are a minister of God you're supposed to teach the word study 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 the word right so verse 10 for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to teach in the in israel statutes and judgments see ezra has found out what he is supposed to do and once he found out what he is supposed to do he prepared his heart say prepared his heart see this is the walk right and the walk cannot come until the vision is clear see ezra found out what he is supposed to do and therefore he prepared his heart to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to teach in israel statutes and judgments what has god called you to do you find that out see once you find it you can arrange your life according to that plan according to that vision do you understand this yeah now let's go back to luke chapter 2 Luke chapter 2 and notice the words of our Lord Jesus here Luke chapter 2 and let's go to the very end verse uh, 48 and when they saw him the Mary and Joseph they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why hast thou thus dealt with us behold your father and I have sought thee sorrowing and he said unto them how is it that you sought me <laughs> <laughs> see he saying by this time you should know where to find me you should know i wouldn't be wandering around uh, you know in some other place you should have known that i'm i'm not going to be eh, you know playing truant in some other place eh? you should have known that uh, you wouldn't found you know find me uh, <coughs> in the market or in a, in a, a merchant place or some other place right you should have known where to find me right you should have known that i must be about my father's business and where do they conduct the father's business in those days the temple right so you should have come directly to the temple why did you go seeking for me and right? why why did you go around searching for me for three days what for what right how is it that you sought me <laughs> you know he sounds like the angel you know you remember um when um, the the women uh, mary magdalene and other women they came to the um grave to look for jesus and then <laughs> the angel asked them why are you seeking him among the dead he is risen right <laughs> see they shouldn't be there right they should they should have expected jesus to rise again because he had taught them repeatedly i'm going to rise again 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 see he had taught them repeatedly yet they went you know they, they, they that didn't register in them at all the resurrection teaching never registered in their heart and mind and so they they like you know any other dead person um they thought he is still going to be there in the grave and they have to go and mummify him you know and so they thought they will go there right mm <laughs> that's what he is saying see they should have known about jesus both mary and joseph know about what who jesus is and what he is going to do right it was revealed to them right at the beginning so he is saying how was it that you sought me you should have known I I must be about my father's business so I would be in the temple you should have come directly here <laughs> notice the clarity in the mind of Jesus the absolute clarity about what he is supposed to do and notice how it affected his life even as a child are, are we you see many times we try to fix the behavior without fixing these kind of things I right? you know at one point of time my my life was uh, moving in all kinds of directions the reason it was moving in all kinds of directions was because i didn't have any clarity whatsoever about what i'm supposed to do i just wanted to make money enjoy my life and you know have fun that that, that was my goal make some money have fun enjoy life right <laughs> that was my idea of life <laughs> to understand that right so i was prone to i could move in any direction right if there is some fun there i could be moved that side right if if there was fun in some other way i could be moved to that way 
right one day i would be thinking about something another day i would be thinking about something else you know i, I still remember <coughs> in bangalore there is this nice place called coffee house you know all these writers and um, uh, artists you know the people theatrical people you know creative people in advertisement area creative people lot of other people students of course and right? they all come to this place and you know, the food is good and cheap it is you know, it's like a cooperative right and it's in the main mg road you know my college was just next to mg road so <coughs> the people people would just come sit there keep eating food drawing things and you know, hashing out ideas and all that do you know how many hours me and my friends have spent in that place trying uh, hashing out ideas for businesses <laughs> we, uh, we we discussed all kinds of stuff right and you know we did none of that <laughs> <laughs> we, we we didn't do any of that <laughs> we, we are not even close to what we were discussing you know the particularly three of us right me my friend <coughs> willy and my friend amit and so, so we, we we used to sit and we used to and discuss this discuss that another friend of mine manuel so we we used to talk about that hmm, this business idea that idea this idea that idea we did nothing about any of that right Uh, and uh, today i'm doing something very different right amit is doing very something very different so is willy and so is the other pra- you know emmanuel you know all of them we we are doing ve- things different things living in different locations right <coughs> those days we did not think that we would end up where we are today right that the reason i'm saying this is because we had no clarity i had zero clarity Right, so I could be moved easily this way, that way, the other way, and you know, put your hand in this and that and the other, right? Uh, that 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 kind of a life won't produce much, you know. Life should be focused. Life should be moving in a single direction with all all the might that we can muster up, right? We we should do what we are called to do with all our strength, from with all our heart. with all that god has given us see that's when you can move forward and progress in life hmm so clarity is an absolute necessity and you look look at the life of jesus he's clear about what he wanted to do he's absolutely certain about what he needed to do as a child and you can see that clarity throughout his life see notice let's go back to matthew now go back to matthew Matthew chapter 16 In Matthew chapter 16 notice Peter is trying to persuade Jesus uh, from not going to the cross <laughs> right so after Jesus uh, expressed um the plan of God concerning him to his disciples Peter had this response verse 22 Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not be unto thee but he turned and said unto peter get thee behind me get thee behind me satan thou art an offense unto me for thou savorest not the things that be of god but those that be of men you know this is not easy to say to someone like peter peter is not an enemy peter loved jesus peter was willing to die for jesus peter you know followed jesus fervently Peter is the man who received the revelation from God that Jesus is the Christ right and uh, so when, when when somebody like that comes and tells you this shall not be you should not do this this is not good <coughs> right you better have clarity to be able to say no you are not right this is what God has shown me right if you don't have clarity and somebody like Peter would approach you and uh, you know who would say things uh, contrary to what god has planned for you you will fall easily right <laughs> notice mary loves jesus big time right jesus knew it and she she came like any other mother would you know sorrowing with, with <laughs> you know with great sorrow right and thinking man she she ran around the whole place thinking that she lost her child and she approached jesus and said why did you do this right notice the response of jesus both there and here 
it's born out of clarity he is asking mary why were you searching for me everywhere see jesus was not indifferent he, it's not like he's uh, you know he doesn't have any feelings you know he doesn't care no jesus cared deeply right but the difference is he has a clarity about what he is supposed to do and mary should have known because you know the angel made it very plain to mary right about who jesus is and same with joseph they should have known but they didn't <laughs> so jesus is asking them why were you looking for me in other places right and here jesus had absolute clarity about what he needs to do so even when somebody as close to him as peter right the number one disciple the man who who is going to lead the church after jesus when he is approaching <coughs> jesus and saying you know no this should not happen you should not be doing this now it's not easy to rebuke them <laughs> it's not easy to say no to those kind of people you can say no to enemies easily that the, the ones who that love you the ones who, who who have your best interest in their heart when they approach you and say no you shouldn't be doing that that's when you better have clarity <laughs> because if you don't have clarity you will fall away hmm do you see this we should learn that from jesus that's why to get such clarity the holy ghost has given us this prayer colossians 1 chapter verse chapter 1 verse 9 colossians chapter 1 verse 9 <laughs> let's read that again for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding do you see this yeah hallelujah we will continue this study next week and um thank you so much for listening please make a note of our whatsapp number it's 9944283332 and also make a note of our email address it's prayer at gwfindia.in you can message us or email your prayer request to us we will believe god along with you god will do awesome things for you and also uh, please to send us your testimonies of how god is working in your life through this ministry we love to hear that we will praise god along with you and those of you who want to send offerings to this ministry become a partner in this ministry uh, please visit our website gwfindia.in and click on the donate tab and you will have all the various options to send the offerings you can choose which one whichever one is suitable for you thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon